Welcome to episode 88 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we continue the saga of Thorstein and learn the fate of the brothers after Olaf is slain in chapters 11 through 12 of Viking Sun. Chapter 11. Now it is to be told that Jokul and his brothers told of the death of Olaf to their father. Said Jokul, This is only thing to be done, that we bring together an army and march to the house of Viking and burn him and all his sons alive in their house, and even this would scarcely be vengeance against Olaf's death. Said Niorf, I wholly forbid that any harm be done to Viking, for I know that my son has not been slain by his advice, and no one is guilty of this but Thor. But Viking and I have sworn to each other an oath of brotherhood, and this oath he has kept better than any one else, and hence I shall not wage any war against him, for I do not think Olaf would be atoned for in the least by slaying Thor and thus giving more grief to Viking. And so Jokul did not get any help in this matter from his father. Olaf was buried with the usual ceremonies of olden times, and from this time Jokul began to keep a suite of men. King Niorf was already growing very old, so that Jokul for the most part had to ward the land. One day it happened that two men went before Niorf, both dressed in blue frocks. They greeted the king. He asked them for their names. One of them, he was called Gautam. The other said he was called Ogotam. And they bade the king give them winter quarter. Answered the king, To me you look ugly and I will not receive you. Said Jokul, Have you any accomplishments? answered Ogatum. As to that we have not much to boast of, still we know many more things than people have spoken to us about, said Yoko. It seems best to me then that you enter my suite and stay with me. So they did. Yoko did well by them. It had been heard at the king's hall that Viking had banished his sons. Jokul was unwilling to believe it, and went to Viking with a large suite. Viking asked what his errand was, and Jokul asked him what he knew about the miscreant Thor. Viking told him that he had banished his sons, so that they did not live there. Jokul asked to be allowed to search the rooms of the house. Viking granted this, but said the king would not have thought that he would deceive him. They then searched the rooms, but as might be expected, they found nothing, and having done this, they returned home. Jokul did not like that he heard nothing of the brothers, and so he said to Ogatum and his comrade, Would not you by your cunning be able to find out where the brothers have their dwelling place? Hmm, I guess not, answered Ogatum. You are nevertheless to let me and my brother have a house to sleep in, and nobody must come there before you, nor must you visit the house until after three days. Yokel saw that this was done, and a small separate house was assigned for them to sleep in. Yokel positively forbade all people mentioning them, and he threatened the transgressor of his order with certain death. Early on the day agreed upon, Yoko came to the house of the brothers. Said then Yokotum, You are too hasty, Yoko, for I have just awaked. Still, I can tell you about the sons of Viking. You know, I suppose, where there is a lake called the Near. In it is a home, and on the home a shed, and on there you are to find the sons of Viking. Answered Yoko, if what you say is so, then I have no hope of their being overtaken. Said Okatum, In all things you seem to me to act like a motherless child, and I do not think you will be able to do much alone. Now I will tell you, continued Okatum, 
that I have a belge, a skin bag, called the weather belge. If I shake it, storm and wind will blow out of it. Together with such biting frost and cold that within three nights the lake shall be covered with so strong an ice that you may cross it on horseback if you wish, said Jokel. Really, you are a man of great cunning, and this is the only way of reaching the home. For there are no ships before you get to the sea, and nobody can carry them so far. Hereupon, Okatan took his belge and shook it, and out of it there came so fearful a snowstorm and such biting frost that nobody could be out of doors. This was a thing of great wonder to all, and after three nights every water and fjord was frozen. Then Yokel gathered together men to the number of thirty. King Nior did not like this journey, and said his mind told him it would cause him more and not less sorrow. For in this journey, he said, I will lose the most of my sons and a great many other men. It would have been better if we, according to the will in the beginning, had come to terms with Thor, and thus kept the friendship of Jarl Viking and his sons. Chapter 12 Now, Yokel got himself ready for the journey together with his thirty men, and besides them Gautam and Ogotam. The same morning Thorstein awoke in his shed and said, Are you awake, Thor? answered him. I am, but I have been sleeping until now, said Thorstein. It is my will that we get ourselves ready for leaving the shed, for I know that Yoko will come here today together with many men, answered Thor. I do not think so, and I am unwilling to go at all, or have you any sign of this. I dreamt, said Thorstein, that twenty-two wolves were running hither, and beside them were seven bears, and the eighth one, a red-cheeked bear, large, grim-looking, and besides these, there were two she-foxes leading the party. The latter were very ugly-looking, and seemed to me the most disgusting of all. All the wolves attacked us, and at last they seemed to tear to pieces all my brothers, excepting you alone. And yet you fell. Many of the bears we slew, and all the wolves I killed— and the smaller one of the foxes, but then I fell. Asked Thor, What do you think this dream means? Thorstein made answer, I think that the large red-cheeked bear must be Filgia, a follower, a guardian spirit of Yokel, and the other bears the Filgias of his brothers, but the wolves undoubtedly were to my mind as many as the men who came with them, for certainly they are wolfish-minded toward us. But besides them were two she-foxes, and I do not know any men to whom such filgias belong. I therefore suppose that some person, hated by almost everybody, have lately come to Yokel, and thus these Filgias may belong to them. Now I have told you this, my thought about the matter, and we will have to act in the manner pointed out to me in my sleep, and I would that we might avoid all trouble. Said Thor, <laughs> I think your dream has been nothing but a scarecrow and idle forebodings. Still, it would not be uninteresting to try our mutual strength. Quoth Thorstein, I do not think so. Uh, it seems to me that an unequal meeting is intended, and I should like that we might get ready to go away from here. Thor said he would not go away, and it had to be as he would have it. Thorstein arose and took his weapons, and all his brothers did likewise. But Thor was very slow about it. At the very time, when they had gotten themselves ready, Yokel came up with his men. The shed 
had two doors, one of which Thorstein guarded together with three of his brothers, and the other was guarded by Thor together with four men. A sharp attack then began. The brothers warded themselves bravely, but Jokel attacked the door warded by Thor so strongly that the three of his brothers fell, but one of them was driven out of the door to the spot where Thorstein stood. Thor still guarded the door for a while, being by no means willing to yield. Then he turned out of the door and found his way among the enemies down upon the ice. They surrounded him. But he defended himself very bravely. Thorstein, seeing this, ran out of the shed together with those of his brothers who were yet alive and went down onto the ice where Thor was standing. And now a fierce combat took place. Thorstein and Thor dealt many heavy blows. And at last all the brothers had fallen except Thorstein and Thor. And all the sons of Niorf had also fallen, save Mjokel and Grimm. Then Thorstein became very weary, so that he was hardly able to stand. He saw that he would fall, and of the opposite party all had fallen but Gotham and Oguntum. Then Thor was both weary and wounded, and the night was already growing very dark. Just then, Thorstein turned against Gotham and stabbed him through his body with Ungervaldil, so that he fell to the ground among the other dead bodies. Then three men, Jokel, Grimm, and Ogotum, arose and searched for Thorstein among the slain, and they thought they had found him. But the person they found was Jokel's brother Finn, for they were so much like each other that it was impossible to know them apart. Grimm said Thorstein was dead, said Ogaton. That shall be put up beyond a doubt, and he cut his head off. But, of course, he did not bleed, for he was already dead. After this, they went home. King Niorf asked them how the meeting had turned out, and learned this. He did not approve it at all, saying that he was now lost much more than his son Olaf, his seven sons and many other men having died. Jokel kept quiet. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales, many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.